This is the next video in our series entitled Making You the Scientist. In today's video, we're going to do a great lab experiment where you're going to be building and testing your own electromagnets. Now, this makes a great activity for a classroom. It's excellent for homeschooling. It makes a great weekend project for you and your kids. And it's also very good as a science fair project because during this experiment, you're going to be doing many things that scientists do every day, including building and testing their own lab equipment, collecting data, making a data table, graphing the data, interpolating the data, and drawing conclusions from what you have seen. Now, if you would like to explore this topic in even greater depth, then I have prepared a full series of materials here that are available at my TPT store. It has equipment lists, instructions, everything you need to complete this activity, and the link is in the description below. Now, let's get started. So these are the materials that you will need to perform this experiment, most of which you have around the house or you can get from a simple trip to the hardware store. First of all, I have four metal bolts. These are M8 bolts and they're five centimeters long. You could also use a large nail if you want. I like these because they're pretty convenient for wrapping the wire on them and also for picking up the paper clips. Then you're gonna need a spool of copper wire. This is copper insulated wire and has a diameter of 0.5 millimeters. Then I have two wires and the wires have alligator clips on them. So I can connect those to my battery pack and to my electromagnets. I have a battery pack here with four AA batteries, 1.5 volts each. So I have a total of six volts. I have about 100 paper clips, that should do it. And then I have a piece of fine grit sandpaper and then I have some tape, a marker, and some scissors that I'm going to be used for cutting and labeling my electromagnets. So the first step is to prepare our materials, and I am going to start by making one of the electromagnets. I have a bolt here, and I have my coated copper wire, my insulated wire, and I'm simply going to wrap that wire around this bolt. I'm going to leave a tail of about two or three inches. I can always cut that shorter if I want to. These bolts are nice because they have threads in them, and I can just wrap the wire right in the threads for my first layer. I have two, three, four, five, count each time, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and just going to keep going. And I'm going to make my first electromagnet with 50 windings. There's 11, 12, That's 44, 13, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, and 50. And that have 50 windings on there. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'll cut the other end of the wire. And again, I'm going to leave a tail of about two or three inches, just like that. And there is my first electromagnet. I have my tape with my label on it, and I can label that it has 50 windings. So I remember how many windings I have on there. Now, the important thing is to try to be somewhat neat when you do the windings and also to try to keep the windings along the same length of the wire. I have about a centimeter left over here. So I have all my windings within the first four centimeters of my wire. So that is my first electromagnet. So in this experiment, I want to test the strength of my electromagnet relative to the number of windings on each one. So I have made four electromagnets, one with 50, one with 100, 150, and 200 windings. Now the next thing I need to do, because this is insulated copper wire, I need to remove that insulation. And the easiest way to do that is to take a piece of fine-grained sandpaper and your electromagnet and simply pull each of the leads through that sandpaper four or five times. And when you do that, that will remove the insulation. And when you look at it after the insulation has been removed, then you will notice that the wire is a bit shinier and has a bit of a more of a true copper color. You need to do that for all four of your electromagnets. Now that we've finished with all of our preparation, we can start testing our electromagnets. You can see I'm going to start with my bolt that has 50 windings on it. And if I place that in my paper clips, it is not magnetic. But I have my battery pack here. I have my wires with my alligator clips, one end attached to each end of the battery pack. The other end goes on to the leads from my electromagnet. And once I attach that and turn on the battery pack, you will see that that bolt becomes magnetized due to the current that is flowing through that coil of wire. If I turn the current off, then it immediately drops all of those paper clips. 
because it's no longer an electromagnet and the bolt is no longer magnetized. Now what I'm going to do is I want to compare the relative strength of my electromagnet based on the number of windings and the based on the number of paper clips that each electromagnet can pick up. So I'm going to turn my current back on. I'm going to pick up as many paper clips as possible and then move everything off to the other side. And I'm going to turn off my electromagnet so that then I can count the number of paper clips that were picked up by this bolt which has 50 windings on it. And I can do that for the other three and then I can see the relative strength of the electromagnets based on the number of paper clips that each can pick up. Now the bolt with 100 windings. Now 150 windings. Getting stronger. Okay, you can see now this is my last electromagnet with 200 windings and let's see how many paper clips that it can pick up. You can see if I squish it around there just like that, it can pick up just about all of those paper clips. That is definitely stronger than my electromagnet with 50 windings. Now I'd like to go through with you the materials that we have available at our Teachers Pay Teacher Store. We have an introduction here where we talk about some of the uses of electromagnets. We have instructions here. We have a complete materials list, everything you need to complete this experiment. And we have a set of procedures that we followed in our video. We also have a lab sheet where you can use for collecting and analyzing your data. We have room here for a data table. We talk about graphing the data, drawing the line of best fit, calculating the slope, and then we also have a piece of graph paper, of course, that you can use and some excellent follow-up questions that you can use when you're talking about the analysis of your data. We also provide you, of course, with a full set of example results. So there you go. I hope you had a really good time building testing and analyzing your electromagnets. If you enjoyed that video, please do all of the following five things. Subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and don't forget that sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends and show them just how much you care. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.